Every time it feels like SpaceX has already done everything possible and can't surprise us anymore, they come up with something that completely changes the conversation. And just recently, a leaked SpaceX document revealed a new plan for Starship that almost no one was expecting. That's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future updates. When SpaceX publicly revealed the Starship program in 2016, the concept was already different from every other rocket under development at the time. Unlike other rockets, Starship was planned as a fully reusable launch system from the beginning. Both the booster and the upper stage were intended to return after every flight. No other operational or proposed rocket had ever attempted this at such a scale. Starship was also designed to be significantly larger than anything that had flown before. The full stack stands around 120 meters tall. The Super Heavy booster alone is about 70 meters tall and powered by 33 Raptor engines. The upper stage, also called Starship, is about 50 meters tall and is designed to reach orbit, survive re-entry, and land vertically. From the start, SpaceX made it clear that traditional landing methods would not be enough to support rapid reuse at this scale. Between 2018 and 2019, SpaceX began openly discussing a new recovery method for the booster. Instead of landing on deployable legs, the company proposed catching the booster directly at the launch site, using a tower equipped with mechanical arms. At the time, this idea was widely criticized. Even among people familiar with Falcon 9 landings, the concept of grabbing a 70-meter-tall booster in midair was seen as unrealistic. No rocket had ever been recovered this way, and the margin for error appeared extremely small. Despite that, SpaceX proceeded with the design. At Starbase in Texas, construction of the launch tower began in 2021. The completed structure stands approximately 146 meters tall. Mounted on the tower are two large steel arms, often referred to as chopsticks. These arms are capable of moving vertically along the tower and are designed to support the full mass of the Super Heavy booster. The booster itself was designed with reinforced load points near its upper section specifically for this capture method. The logic behind this system was practical. By removing landing legs, the booster could be lighter and structurally simpler. Catching the booster at the tower also eliminates the need to transport it back from a landing zone. In theory, after capture, the booster could be placed directly back onto the launch mount and prepared for another flight in a much shorter time frame. In late 2024, SpaceX tested this system during a Starship flight. After liftoff, Super Heavy separated from the upper stage roughly 2 minutes and 40 seconds into the mission. The booster then performed a controlled flip ignited its engines for a boost back burn, and began returning toward the launch site. About seven to eight minutes after liftoff, the booster approached the tower at low speed. Using engine thrust and aerodynamic control surfaces, it aligned itself precisely between the arms. The arms closed and successfully caught the booster while it was still above the ground. This was the first time an orbital-class rocket booster had ever been recovered this way. While this solved the recovery problem for Super Heavy, the upper stage remained a different story. After separation, the Starship upper stage continues accelerating. It burns its engines for several more minutes until it reaches orbital velocity, which is about 7.8 kilometers per second. Depending on the test profile, Starship may complete a partial orbit or a full orbit around Earth. A full orbit takes approximately 90 minutes. During early test flights in 2023, 2024, and early 2025, SpaceX did not attempt to recover the upper stage. After completing re-entry tests, Starship was deliberately guided into the ocean. These splashdowns were controlled and planned. Recently, internal filings revealed that SpaceX is actively preparing for a new recovery method. Instead of allowing Starship to impact the ocean, the company plans to land the upper stage on a large drone ship positioned far offshore. This would be similar in concept to Falcon 9 booster recoveries, but very different in execution. SpaceX has extensive experience landing Falcon 9 boosters on drone ships. These platforms are typically around 90 meters long and are based on converted barges. 
A Falcon 9 booster has a dry mass of about 25 tons and lands using a single Merlin engine, producing roughly 845 kilonewtons of thrust. The landing burn lasts only a few seconds, and the booster descends in a vertical orientation the entire time. Starship is much larger and heavier. The upper stage is about 50 meters tall and 9 meters in diameter. Even with most of its propellant depleted, it can weigh more than 100 tons. During landing, Starship may need to use two or three Raptor engines. Each Raptor engine produces approximately 2.3 meganewtons of thrust. This means a Starship landing could involve more than six meganewtons of thrust directed at the deck of the drone ship. For comparison, this is several times more thrust than a Falcon 9 landing and approaches the thrust levels seen during Falcon 9 liftoff rather than recovery. Current Falcon drone ships are not designed to handle forces of that magnitude. A Starship landing platform would need to be significantly larger, more rigid, and more stable. Another major difference is landing hardware. Falcon 9 boosters deploy landing legs just before touchdown. Starship currently does not have landing legs. These were removed from the design once SpaceX committed to tower catches. To land on a drone ship, Starship would need deployable legs capable of supporting extremely high loads. Integrating these legs into the lower section of the vehicle would require major design changes as this area already contains six Raptor engines, fuel plumbing, and structural components. Flight dynamics also make Starship recovery more difficult. Falcon 9 boosters re-enter the atmosphere engine first and remain vertically oriented. Starship re-enters sideways in a controlled belly flop configuration. It uses four large flaps to manage drag and heating. Only in the final seconds does the vehicle rotate upright, relight its engines, and attempt a vertical landing. All of these maneuvers must be executed precisely before touching down on a moving platform affected by waves and wind. Even though all of this makes Starship far more difficult than any rocket before it, SpaceX has already solved problems that were previously considered harder than this. Landing an orbital booster vertically was once considered unrealistic. Catching a 70-meter booster in midair using mechanical arms was dismissed as fantasy until it actually happened. Because of that track record, there is a strong reason to believe SpaceX can also solve the problem of recovering the Starship upper stage on a drone ship. Musk has repeatedly stated that the long-term goal for Starship is to reduce the cost per launch to around $1 million, or even less in the future. That number sounds unrealistic when compared to current launch prices, but it explains why SpaceX is pushing so aggressively toward full reuse of both stages. To understand how extreme that target is, it helps to look at what rockets cost today. A Falcon 9 launch currently costs around $67 million for commercial customers. Even with first stage reuse, Falcon 9 still expends the upper stage on every flight. United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket is estimated to cost between $100 and $110 million per launch. Europe's Ariane 6 is expected to cost between $70 and $90 million per launch, depending on configuration, and it is fully expendable. Blue Origin's new Glenn has not flown yet, but estimates place its launch cost well above $60 million, even with partial reuse. Space Launch System launches cost more than $2 billion per flight when all program expenses are included. In comparison, Starship is designed so that neither stage is thrown away. The Super Heavy booster is intended to be caught by the launch tower and reused almost immediately. The Starship upper stage, if recovered on a drone ship, would also return intact instead of being lost in the ocean. If both stages are reused dozens or even hundreds of times, the cost per flight stops being dominated by hardware replacement and becomes dominated by fuel, inspection, and operations. The propellant cost for a full Starship launch is relatively low. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen together cost on the order of a few hundred thousand dollars per launch, even at current prices. Ground operations, labor, and maintenance add more, but they are still small compared to the cost of building an entirely new rocket for every flight. This is how SpaceX arrives at the $1 million target. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.